I had to feed 22 horses every morning before I earned the right to have breakfast. Imagine an eight and a half year old kid getting up in the dark in Canada and going outside and opening the barn door. And I remember there would be like 30 rats every time I opened the barn door and they would scurry around and I would hope that none of them would stay around. And one time I went back to the house and I said, dad, can you come with me? And he locked the door and he says, go out and do your chores and don't come back until they're done. And it was kind of the beginning of me realizing that I wasn't in a supportive environment. And I learned one thing, and one thing only, is that if I was willing to work hard, then I could get my dad's attention. But I remember waking up, I was about 13 or 14 years old, and this was the day my dad had promised me it was gonna be yes. This was the day we were gonna to play together. We were gonna to throw the football back and forth, and I was super excited. I popped out of my bed and I ran down the stairs, and I saw my father where he always is. His ankle is chained to the desk. But as I got closer, I knew something was wrong. It was like I could, I could feel there was a heaviness in the air. And I started to get nervous. And I went, Dad? And he went, yes. I went, uh, um, you, you, you ready to go play? And the weirdest thing happened is he turned, he looked at me, and I felt myself shrinking down. And he stood up and this shadow cast over me and he goes, do you have any idea what it takes to put food on the table? Do you think that this roof just puts itself there? Money doesn't grow on trees, you know. One day you're gonna have to work hard for money. Now get out and play on your own before I put you to work. And I turned around and I walked out and I never asked him again to play, ever. I don't have one memory of playing with my dad. Not one. The only way I connected with him was when he was working around the house doing a chore. I'd say, Dad, can I help you? And I'd hand him the nails or I'd hold the measuring tape. It was the only way. Never once. He never came to my hockey games. He dropped me off in the car and stayed in the car. While all the other parents were tying their skates, I was there alone. I would try to score as many goals as I could so I could go in and tell him that I scored the winning goals. So he'd want to come and look, but he never did. I remember winning honors in school for um, academic achievement, looking out in the crowd, hoping to see my dad, but he was never there. So the only solace I had was to work hard. So I doubled down on that and I worked hard and I'd call him out to look at the task being done and invariably it was never good enough. So I doubled down again and worked harder. It didn't feel good at the time, but in life what you do, if you do what is easy, life will be difficult. But if you do what is difficult, life will be easy. I got the difficult part up front and I got really good at it. By the time I was 14, I saved up enough money to get a scooter. By the time I was 16, I had my first car. By the time I was 17, I thought, you know what? I'm out of here. This sucks. I mean, I could go out and make four times the amount of money living on my own, even if I have to pay rent, I don't care. So I moved out, I drove a taxi. I did carpentry, I cut lawns, I washed windows. I did anything that was hard work because that's all I knew. And then my life changed. I got a call from my stepmom, and she said, your dad has cancer. So I jumped on a plane and I did everything I could. I took care of the house. He said to me he had some back taxes from Canada that were unpaid. I said, yes, I'll pay them for you. I did everything I possibly could. And I remember the day I had to leave to go back to take care of my family. I had a young son at the time, and I had nothing left. And I asked my dad, well, he was probably 98 pounds sitting, lying in the bed. And I said, dad, can you think of a time when um, when I, I made you proud. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, there's a whole bunch. I'd, I was almost a millionaire by that time. I had done so many things. I'd risen up, I'd opened a restaurant, I'd nearly learned a new language, I'd done so many things. This was the time he was gonna go, of course, son, let me read from a list. But instead, he said nothing that I can think of. And I don't know if it broke my spirit or if I thought I'd hit rock bottom, I hit another layer. But when I got back home, actually, I was fired from my job. My marriage had fallen apart. Um, I had no money left that, it, that I'd paid to support him. So I got evicted from my apartment and I moved back in my mom with my mom at the age of 30. So there I am, 30 years old, working 16 hours a day for 20 years. And I have absolutely nothing to show for it, except maybe a skill set on how to work hard. But I tell you what, when you're down there and you think there's nothing left, it's the foundation to grow from. I thought, what am I going to do now? And some little bird 
mentioned real estate, so I thought I'd get into real estate. I got into real estate, and that's when I met my first mentor that transformed my life. I was in my office one night really late, and I was having a conversation with my mentor, and he walks in and he leans against the door and he goes, you're still here? And I said, yeah. And he goes, you really have a great work ethic. And I went, you talking to me? He goes, yeah, I'm talking to you. He goes, you're awesome. I'm like, are you still talking to me? It's like I never had anybody tell me that they believed in me. My father certainly was always, you could do better, you could do better, you could do better. Yeah, it drove me, but it didn't make me feel confident. And I doubted it at first. And we started to talk and he goes, oh, so you've labeled yourself stupid as a loser and a skinny little kid. He goes, how do you feel about that? And I said, I still feel that way. He says, you're 30 years old. I go, yeah, I know, but I still felt that way inside. He says, okay, we're gonna change that. Who's an idol that you have? I said, well, one of my favorite is, is you know, like Clint Eastwood. He's like rugged, I'm kind of rugged, I feel rugged. He goes, perfect. How does that feel when you say that? He said, that feels pretty good. He goes, that's it. I want you to say that a thousand times, a thousand times every day or more if you want. Loser out, ruggedly handsome in. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reprogram your brain. Your brain is like software. We're just gonna reprogram it. I said, how do I do that? He goes, just every time you have a chance, say, I'm ruggedly handsome, I'm ruggedly handsome. He said, the words that follow I am follow you. You just didn't know it. You had shitty programming. But now we're gonna change that and change that forever. And I remember driving home, I was so excited. I was, I was so excited because I could change my program. I didn't know it. I thought I was stuck that way my whole life. And all I had to do was have the energy to put it into changing the way I see myself. And it was, I just said it over, I remember screaming in the car, I'm ruggedly handsome, I'm ruggedly handsome, I'm ruggedly handsome. I'd get up in the morning, I'd say it over and over and over again. I'd say it as much as I possibly could. And then spontaneously one morning, I was in the shower and I said, I'm the greatest real estate agent in my area. I'm the greatest real estate agent in my area. And I went from one sale in my first year to in a few years, a hundred sales, I broke every record there was. And then I bought the freaking company. Went from, from farm boy to financially free. I became resourceful. I became capable of doing things I didn't know I was gonna do. The most powerful force in the human psyche is how we describe ourselves to ourselves. Who's giving you labels? You're too short, you're too tall, you're quiet, you're introverted. And you take on those labels and you wear them like they're your persona. And then you live into them, like a role that you were given in life. You can rewrite that. You can make it whatever you want. Insert it and then program it. I am, I am. You are what? Gifted, guided, grateful, powerful, passionate, playful, sexy, sensual, sensitive, and blessed. What are you? Today is the first day of the rest of your life and you get to redefine yourself. So who are you? And who do you want to be? The words that follow I am follow you.